today we will be continuing our lecture on differential amplifier. We had in the last class seen something about the DC amplifier aspect. Actually, we said the offset is an important parameter which has to be compensated for properly by doing good matching. Uh, and we saw something about delta V B matching as far as bipolar transistors are concerned. The equivalent term for MOSFETs will be the <coughs> delta V G S mismatch. So, offset can arise due to delta V B as well as delta V G S. Further, we said offset can also arise because of bias current mismatch. And this can be taken care of to a certain extent. This compensation for this can be taken care of to a certain extent in the circuit design. So, this is your responsibility as an application engineer to select the input stage properly for a DC amplifier. DC amplifier should have low input offset, whatever it be, either the voltage or the current, depending upon the type of source you are using. So, it is important that you should know what kind of source you are using. Based on that, you will select the input stage properly and then estimate the effect of offset and compensate for it by designing that particular circuit properly. And uh, we will see how such compensation can be effected in specific applications later on when we discuss uh, application proper. So, that part is regarding low frequency amplifiers or DC amplifiers, where the offset output offset and the resultant drift due to offset is the primary problem that should be avoided as much as possible. In fact, we have a fairly uh, complex mechanism of what is called trimming the transistors. This is a technology uh, process. You can trim, laser trim the transistors, so that delta V B offset can be made very small, much less than the normally expected 1 to 2 millivolts. So, you will see the advertisements etcetera, laser trimmed uh, low offset, low drift amplifiers. What it means is delta V B has been trimmed after the device gets manufactured, so that output offset is minimized. Then the drift effect is going to be minimized. But obviously, since you are give, giving particular attention to each amplifier, the cost of the amplifier goes enormously high. So, it is better to get a circuit configuration basically, wherein the inherent offset itself is the lowest possible if you are thinking of designing DC amplifiers. Today, we will further discuss other special purpose ICs based on the differential amplifier. We have a specific integrated circuit manufactured by uh, uh, particular multinational uh, national semiconductor. We will see how this particular uh, stage can be used for a variety of applications later. Before we go to that particular IC, I would like to discuss in general about wide band amplifiers. What is the basic theory behind wide banding number one? How RF and IF amplifiers which are narrow band amplifiers at high frequencies can also be designed once we understand about wide band amplifiers. So, we are now discussing the theory of wide band amplifiers first. Let us consider the common emitter stage which is the amplifier and it is having uh, let us say the collector load which is the AC load. It might also involve the input impedance of the next stage or actual load okay, in parallel with the collector load. Now, this is the basic common emitter amplifier. When we replace the transistor by means of a, its high frequency equivalent circuit which we have already discussed in our earlier introductory uh, lecture, 
we saw that the, the bandwidth of the amplifier is now controlled by what are called the time constants of the circuits. Now, we have to understand what these time constants are. Okay. We know that the gain, low frequency gain of this amplifier is simply equal to G m into R c, that is it. So, the bandwidth of the amplifier, how is it controlled? Now, you have to replace this transistor by means of its hybrid pi equivalent circuit for discussion of the bandwidth. Let us therefore, see how this transistor equivalent circuit is going to be replaced now by means of its hybrid pi. So, we have R B B dash, okay, this is the base, this is the collector, this is the emitter. R B B dash is the ohmic resistance I told you about from the base contact to the base junction which is of the order of few ohms and coming to B dash we have the resistance which is R B dash E which is because of the diode resistance R E appearing at the input of the common emitter amplifier as beta, tan, beta plus 1 times R E or H F E plus 1 times R E this R B dash E. Across this, we have the capacitance which is called Cb dash E, which is termed by the device people as the diffusion capacitor, because the junction is forward biased, okay, because we are injecting impurities uh, that is uh, carriers from emitter to base. This kind of capacitor arises here, C B dash E. This is, I mean, we can intuitively feel that since the junction is forward biased, this capacitor is likely to be very high. Okay. The de depletion layer width is going to be extremely small. It is not depletion layer capacitance. We can intuitively feel that it is forward biased and this capacitor is likely to be very high compared to the other capacitor which is between the base and the collector which is called as the depletion layer capacitance or transition capacitance. Okay. So, this is because collector base junction is reverse biased and inherently it acts like a what capacitor with depletion layer width as the width of the capacitor. So, this capacitor is going to be very small okay, because normally collector base junction is reverse biased to a great extent and therefore, depletion layer width is going to be large and therefore, this capacitance is going to be very small. This C B dash C is going to depend upon the reverse bias voltage that is important to understand. C B dash C is a function of reverse bias voltage, higher the reverse bias voltage magnitude, smaller is the capacitor. Depending upon the type of the junction, the nature of variation is going to differ. But the capacitance is going to vary with voltage, whereas here the base to emitter capacitance is dependent upon the operating current. Okay. So, the base to emitter capacitance is the impedance is a factor directly dependent upon operating current, whereas this is dependent upon voltage. Please remember this fact. And then we have the collector and from collector we have the current source which is nothing but G m into V b dash E. So, 
across this of course, we have R B dash sorry R B dash uh, that is R C E as the non-ideal uh, impedance across the current source which is going to be of the order of hundreds of kilo ohms. So, this is the hybrid pi equivalent circuit which is commonly used universally for the transistor. V, v b dash? Ah, so, V b dash E is the voltage across this B dash and E terminal. So, V b dash E between these two. So, now obviously, since a source is going to be connected to this R s and we have the source voltage as V s, we are going to have this R s coming in series with R v b dash always. So, for all purposes we can merge R v b dash with R s always. What it simply means is even if you are able to get a very good source with low source resistance, we have R b b dash still coming in series with the structure. So, if it comes in series with the structure obviously, the voltage across this capacitor is going to be lower at higher frequencies okay, than the source voltage itself. So, obviously, the high frequency performance depends upon how low R s plus R v b dash could be. So, since the current source current is dependent upon V b dash E, if we make this particular resistance very low, the high frequency performance of the circuit is going to be excellent. Now, how do we really tackle this problem about common emitter stage? So, this output is going to be now connected to R c. So, this is the equivalent circuit, high frequency equivalent circuit representation of the common emitter stage. How do we simply solve this? We make approximations here. We know that this has an input port and an output port and we would like to clearly get an idea about input time constant and output time constant. So, what happens to this capacitor? The only thing that links the output to the input is this capacitor C B dash C. This C B dash C if it is not there, there is no connection between output and input and input time constant could have been independently found out okay, compared to the output. So, because C B dash C is there, we have to do some approximation here in order to simplify the results. What is the simplification? What we simply say is that this capacitor is between B dash and C. It can be converted to an equivalent capacitor between B dash and E by what is called Miller theorem, which all of you are aware of. This G V B dash E voltage is going to generate a current of G m into V B dash E. And we would like to know how, how much the output voltage is going to be. What is it going to be? R C E parallel R C is the effective load resistance that into G m. So, G m into R C parallel R V dash E okay, that plus here and minus here. So, that is if you put this as V naught, V naught is going to be this into V B dash E. All of you agree to this? So, V B dash E is the voltage here and I am neglecting the effect of the capacitor. Capacitor is after all going to bring down the gain. So, I am now going to consider what is the worst case effect of this capacitor at the input. Okay. So, while finding out the output voltage in relation to V b dash e, I am neglecting the capacitor that is the approximation. 
then the output voltage V naught is going to be this. Is it clear? R C parallel R C. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you. R C. R C parallel R C. So this particular gain, in fact, is approximately equal to under normal circumstances, okay, is the same as G M into R C because R C is of the order of hundreds of kilo ohms. So Now you might ask why. In order to do wide banding, I must have all the time constant as small as possible because the bandwidth is okay going to be governed by one over the time constant, okay, both at the input as well as the output. So in any wide banding, the main main aim of wide banding is to make these time constants as small as possible. The resistive part obviously comes and therefore the resistors used in all wideband circuit will be very low. That means automatically we have to sacrifice a lot in terms of the gain that we can okay, obtain from wideband amplifiers. If you want very wideband amplifiers, the resistances have to be low. So that is why this approximation is normally valid in all wideband circuits that RC parallel RCE is very nearly equal to RC without any problem. Therefore, the gain is the usual minus GM into RC gain that we have been utilizing. So what happens to this capacitor? VB dash E is this voltage and this is this gain okay, times this voltage with a negative sign. So this capacitor appears as C B dash E into 1 plus G M into R C okay, as the input capacitor okay, because the current through the circuit is going to be this voltage minus this voltage that is V B dash E minus minus that means plus G M into R C into V B dash E or V B dash E into 1 plus G M R C divided by 1 over J omega C B dash C. So, C B dash C can be thought of as becoming equal to C B dash C, I am sorry, C B dash C into 1 plus G M into R C. So, this is the effective capacitor plus this capacitor will be coming in shunt with C B dash E. This is the total capacitor CT at the input. Is this clear? So C B dash E comes in parallel with C B dash C into 1 plus G M R C. So this is the total capacitor. So you can note the fact that higher the gain, higher will be the input capacitor. So once again, lower gain is automatically required in order to make this time constant very low. Okay. Now, as far as the resistance at the input is concerned between this point and this point, what is the effective resistance? R B dash E parallel R B B dash plus R S. So, effective resistance or total across C total is going to be at the input is R B dash E parallel R S plus R B B dash. So, what is the time in input time constant that is going to be R T i into C T i is the input time constant. of the common emitter amplifier. Is it clear? What is the output time constant? Because 
So, the output time constant, output resistance, effective resistance on a similar basis, let us see RC parallel RC, which is approximately equal to RC itself. RC parallel RCE is the RT output. Okay. And what is the effective capacitor at the output? This C B dash C is going to very nearly come at the output, because when the output voltage is high, input voltage is going to be very low. Effectively, this C B dash C is going to be the capacitor. Or actually, it is C B dash C into 1 plus 1 over A, right? but that 1 over A being very high, it is C B dash C itself. So, output capacitor is going to be equal to C B dash C plus, please remember the other capacitor which in an integrated circuit comes into picture, that is the substrate capacitor. So, since the collector is always connected to the substrate through a junction, okay, we have what is called as substrate capacitor. to ground. So, the output time constant <coughs> is equal to R T O C T O. Now, look at it this way. C T O is very small compared to C T I, there is no doubt about it. Okay? And the value of R T O, which will be maybe of the order of kilo ohms to maybe hundreds of ohms depending upon the wide banding effect you would you like to have, is going to be very nearly equal to, right? again, this may be another stage driving it. Okay? So, R s may be of the order of kilo ohms to hundreds of ohms. Right? So, these resistances may be of the same order R T O and R T I may be of the same order. This is okay, several orders of magnitude higher than this. So, input time constant is the dominant time constant, which is going to determine the cutoff frequency of the wideband amplifier as how much? If input time constant is the dominant, what is the cutoff frequency or the bandwidth of the amplifier? Omega 1 by R T i C T i. So, the bandwidth of the amplifier, if that is the dominant time constant, is going to be Is it clear? This is for a common emitter amplifier. Let us once again see. C T i is going to be C B dash C, which is a huge quantity compared to C B dash C. And this C B dash E is getting added to C B dash C into 1 plus G M R C because of what is called Miller effect. So, this is the Miller effect. This capacitance being several orders of magnitude higher than C T O, we say that R T i, R T O are of the uh, same order. Okay. Maybe that R T i is just one order less, if you are actually using a low impedance source then clearly the input time constant becomes dominant. Otherwise, both input time constant and output time, time constant will determine the upper cutoff frequency or 3 degree frequency. Right? So, now what should we do? We cannot do something uh, at the output, because output time constant is the lowest possible. The device engineer 
this devices the transistor in such a manner that C B dash C <coughs> is made as small as possible. With the advent of uh, the planar technology, we have been able to make C B dash C extremely small, so that the earlier need in the earlier discrete circuits of what is called neutralization, neutralizing the feedback capacitor by using external circuit became unnecessary in the current circuit. Okay. What is neutralization? Neutralizing the effect of feedback caused by C B dash C. This C B dash C is linking output with input and it is a big headache for us okay, if you are trying to design high gain amplifiers, if there is a feedback from output to input that will cause what? Invariably high frequency oscillation. It will cause at some frequency okay, positive feedback and causes high frequency oscillation. So, this capacitor is a troublesome affair for high frequency application. So, earlier people used to take pains to neutralize the effect of this by using sophisticated neutralization schemes. Okay. But you people do not have to worry about neutralization at all. You have devices nowadays available with this feedback being totally nullified by the technology itself. Okay. It has been made very, very small. Now, even though it has been made very small, because we are designing a high gain amplifier, its effect is going to be still felt at the input okay, in fixing up the upper cutoff frequency of the stage. Now, we have to see that this upper cutoff frequency is as high as possible. So, that is what is called wide banding. How to adopt circuit means of making this time constant as low as possible is what we are going to discuss next. Okay. The basic concept of wide banding is to make the time constants at all points as low as possible. Let us view the concept again in a different manner. If it is a voltage source, which is the source that is driving, then the most appropriate load for wide banding is an open circuit. Let us see. If it is a voltage source that is driving, the load, then the capacitor will come somewhere here like this. This is the R C time constant. If you want the total time constant to be very low, you do not have to worry because this source is going to shunt this and therefore, effectively R S comes in parallel with R I. So, R S is going to take care of it. To make the time constant very low irrespective of the value of C i. This is, this is called mismatch. That is always the source and the load should be totally mismatch. Okay. If the load is high, the source should be of that of a low impedance or it should be a voltage source. If the load is low, the source should be that of high impedance. That means, it should be a current source drive. That means, once again, if you have C i itself very low, then I drive means of a current with R s being very so, if you have a current source load, it is appropriate for driving a short circuit that is understandable ideal load for it. And if it, you have a voltage source load, it is appropriate for driving a an open circuit. And that means, if the wide banding is essentially okay, 
achieved simply by mismatching the source and the low beam. I mean, it's only a concept. Okay, looking at uh, the entire set of rules in terms of what is driven and what is to drive. Now. <coughs> impedance mismatch. Now, let us see. We had this common emitter amplifier here. Our trouble was that the output okay, was going on to a resistance of the order of kilo ohms or so. And output is supposed to be a current source G m into V b dash. And the output load is really not mismatched to the current source. Actually, it should have been fed into a short. So, what is it? What is the stage that is going to act as a short? We know that a common base input is going to act as a short. So, a common emitter amplifier cascaded to a common base is going to cause a gross mismatch at this point, why right? a current source is going to be seeing a short circuit as the load. And this should result in wide banding. Let us see how. Now, you see that as far as Miller effect is concerned, the voltage gain is evaluated from here to here. Both, if both of these are operating at the same current, the Re of this and Re of this will be the same. So, what will be the gain of this stage? G m is equal to 1 over R e into small r e. So, the gain is going to be equal to in magnitude equal to 1. So, it is just going to act as an inverting amplifier. That means, Miller effect is drastically reduced or the Miller capacitor is now going to appear as C b dash C into 1 plus 1. That is, it is going to appear as 2 into C b dash C. But you might say, have we done some mischief here, sir? Because have we lost the low frequency gain? No, we have not lost any low frequency gain because this current is going to be same as this current is going to be same as this current because common base is nothing but an amp current amplifier with unity gain. So this current, which is Gm into Vi or Gm into Vb dash E, is simply conveyed here in the same direction. So, this is an exact replica of common emitter as far as low frequency is concerned, but high frequency there is a drastic change in the time constant at the input. So, the Miller effect is totally eliminated. This is the famous wide band pair called what is it called? Cascode common emitter cascaded to common base is called a cascode structure. So, I can directly connect R c here and the gain shall remain exactly equal to minus g m R c, no difference as far as the low frequency gain is concerned, but as far as high frequency time constant is concerned, C t i is going to get drastically reduced. Rest of the things will remain unaltered. Okay. Let us see the output time constant here. This is no longer the output. This is what is called the intermediate time constant now, output being here. So, this is a short circuit here, which means impedance is R e. The capacitance is going to be the output capacitance, which was earlier output capacitance, now the intermediate capacitance. So, intermediate capacitance has 
okay, change in marginally, but now the resistance here has come, come down drastically. So, this time constant is very, very low, negligibly small. The output, actual output time constant remains unaltered, this is R c and across this we have C b dash C plus C s. Okay. So, that remains the same as earlier time constant. So, output time constant of the structure remains same as that of the common emitter stage, but the input time constant comes down drastically. So, this is going to have a upper cutoff frequency, which is much higher okay, than the common emitter stage. And in integrated circuits, this is totally replacing every common emitter high frequency structure. You should never use common emitter stage. Instead, you should use always this, because this is coming as a pair at the same cost as a single transistor, okay, but has ex excellent properties, high frequency properties, this Kaskowski. Now, do we identify a Kasko structure? in our differential amplifier IC, do we identify a Kasko structure? Yes. Can you see that? We have T 3, which can act as common emitter stage, forget about this. Okay. And I can connect the load to this, to VCC here, then this whole thing becomes a Kasko structure. So, how do we connect? We will connect in this structure, this to supply voltage and T 3 will act as the common emitter and T 2 will then act as the common base, if B base is connected to ground. That means, A C wise, this base is going to be connected through external capacitor to ground, so that this structure now acts as a Casco structure. This is an important innovation now. This differential amplifier is now being used as a Casco amplifier. Are you able to follow this? So, that is another pair, that is a differential amplifier acting as a differential pair. Now, we have to see whether it has same property as a common emitter amplifier. It does not have, we will see that. Okay. It is different from okay, CAS code. CAS code is a 1 is to 1 replacement of a common emitter amplifier okay, as far as low frequency operation is concerned. Whereas, this pair, if we use, how, how can we use this? That will come to later. Okay that is a separate pair, how to use this itself. So, in, the, in using it as a Casco stage, T 1 is not going to come into picture or why not use T 1 also? What purpose can we use T 1 for? Let us see. If T 1 is off, the entire current of this will go into this. If T 1 is on fully, the entire current will come into T 1 and nothing will go to T 2. That means, I can use it for controlling the gain of the structure. The signal current, okay, including the DC current is going to be shared depending upon the DC voltage that I am applying between base. So, I am therefore, applying a DC voltage between this base and this base. That is facilitated by an attenuator here. Okay. So, the both the bases are not connected to the same DC potential. The DC potential can be varied by varying E A G C. Is this point understood? So, if this potential is same as this potential, if this potential is same as this potential, what is the gain of the stage? G M R C by 2, because at that point of time, these two currents will be the same. So, if this potential is same as this potential, then the gain is going to be G m R c by 2. If this potential is higher than this potential appropriately by few millivolts, then immediately 
I can make this current go to 0, the gain is 0. If this potential is lower than this potential by few millivolts, this current can be channeled to this transistor and I can make the current go to the full value that means gain is going to be GMRC. So, this voltage is called okay, BAGC automatic gain control, automatic part is later to come. Okay. Presently, it is a DC which can control the gain of the high frequency amplifier. Therefore, whether this is a wide band amplifier or a tuned amplifier, RF amplifier, IF amplifier, whatever be the state that is dependent upon the kind of load that you are going to connect here. If it is a tuned amplifier, RC will be replaced by a tuned structure. The VAGC is going to be, the DC voltage is going to be applied. The great advantage, I do not know whether you have realized it or not. In a common emitter amplifier, also when it is connected like this to a tuned circuit, okay, like this, we have now a problem here. Okay. If I want to vary the gain of this stage, GM has to be varied. If GM has to be varied, operating current has to change. So, I change the operating current. That is how uh, discrete circuit IF amplifier stages had the gain varying. Okay. So, the operating current used to vary depending upon the AGC voltage, which is de derived out of the detector. Okay. In a radio receiver circuit, it is derived out of the detector, the DC voltage dependent upon the what is that IF amplitude. Okay. So, that was controlling the operating current. And when the current was getting varied, what was getting varied? Input capacitor is getting varied. Okay, a dangerous thing because the input also is maybe getting tuned. Tuned input, tuned output situation. Think of, right? Input capacitor, if it is varied, okay, input is getting detuned. So, even when the operating current was changing, output bias voltage also is likely to change. If output bias current changes, okay, then again output bias voltage changes, then the C B dash C also changes, that also is going to change. Right? Let us look at this. Okay. When this voltage changes, this current remains absolutely, DC current remains absolutely constant. So, in a cash code structure realized out of this, the input time constant remains independent of the AGC voltage variation. Okay. Is this clear? So, what is going to happen here is, if it is a tuned circuit normally, okay, the collector voltage is going to be very nearly at the same potential as VCC, right? Because you are putting an L. Okay. So the collector to base is not going to vary much, and therefore that capacitance is not going to. Okay. So the effect of AGC voltage on the tuning okay, uh, is not coming into picture at all. Okay. The tuning can be independently controlled by varying the operating uh, that is currents of T1 and T2 without affecting the input stage T3. This number one. That is also independent of the load. Now, let us look at the load. The load earlier was directly connected to this in the following manner, but now it is connected through a common base structure. So, what is the feedback factor? Whatever is fed back from load to the input of the common base and then from the input of the common base to the input of the common emitter. That means, two transistors cascaded which are basically feed forward structures with very little of feedback. That means, feedback gets also factor also gets multiplied and it goes towards 0 faster. Okay. So, using more number of stages, 
okay, with very little feedback will cause further feedback to go towards 0 as fast as possible. So, the reverse transmission of the Casco stage several orders of magnitude less than the reverse transmission of the common emitter stage. That means, output stage is totally isolated from input stage. Input can be tuned independently of the output. And this is an important uh, criteria in tuned amplifier design. Okay. So, Casco structure is the structure which is universally adopted in all present day RF, IF amplifier mixer stages. Okay. Mixer also is okay, a high frequency tuned amplifier. Okay. So, mixer RF, IF amplifiers use this particular structure universally for all applications. So, we will continue with the discussion about how AGC varies this gain, you would like to know okay, mathematically. I think we have already discussed this part as a homework problem I have given you. Okay. How the current division affects the gain, okay. how I e 1 by I e 2 affects the gain. We will discuss this in detail okay, as to get an idea as to what VAGC <coughs> variation should be here. Okay. This voltage should be made equal to this voltage for making the gain equal to half. What is this voltage? Quickly tell me roughly R A by R A plus R B times V C C okay, plus V gamma if you want. Okay. So, that is if you neglect V gamma normally for uh, let us say 6 volt supply if this is uh, 3 K 3 K this will be volts. Okay. So, if you put AGC equal to 3 volts whatever be the resistance you have a gain of GMRC by 2 that is the starting point. On either side of these 3 volts you can vary assuming that the current in RC RD is extremely small because we can make RC plus RD very large compared to RA and RB. Is this clear? Okay, thank you.